Miles Sanders, can he be a RB1 in 2020? And Johnny, I mean, I'll let you open here, but I think the emphatic answer for me is right here. So moving on to our next running back we're going to be talking about here. We were, you know, going across these Reddit topics. And one of uh, these awesome uh, articles that was posted on Reddit was from ffastronauts.com about soaring Sanders is the title of the the article, and it's about Miles Sanders. And so really, Johnny, the question becomes, <laughs> we're watching Miles Sanders' ADP skyrocket here. He is literally soaring, as they said here, which I thought was a great name for an article on a site called FF Astronauts. I thought it was well well done here. Wordplay is, is a 10. But um, Miles Sanders, can he be a RB1 in 2020? And Johnny, I mean, I'll let you open here, but I think the emphatic answer for me is yes. Like, I, yeah. I, I think absolutely he can be an RB one. You hear Chelsea uh, chiming in yeah. here. I guess she's got yeah. she's Chelsea, got Sanders Abbott on her Philly dynasty fan. team. Yeah. She's an and I'm an Eagles fan, fan, baby. Yeah. <laughs> she loves it. But I think there's so much here um, to talk about. So, Johnny, why don't you get us started here with Miles Sanders and, and what you thought after reading this article and what your thoughts are about his soaring ADP? So Miles Sanders currently is RB13 coming off the board, uh, and this is in high stakes leagues. So um, that's pretty high, pretty, pretty high for a guy that, listen, what what he did as a rookie, very, very impressive. And then if you're removing what he did, I, and I, again, I want to give props to Travis, and I plan on making this a cutout so people can really see because some people might not believe me. But Travis literally called this, almost to the exact week. This happened in week nine where uh, Jordan Howard kind of phased out of the game. And I think where you're getting him right now at 6.07, the RB31, take hit that pick, stash him on your bench as a guy you don't have to rely on right now and watch him pop off from week six, seven, eight on and lead you to the fantasy playoffs and potentially a fantasy championship. Um, so but pretty, pretty good. I'll give it to him. Um, I'll, I'll count it. I, I'll, I'll count it. Uh, but from that week 11 to week 17, and I know normally that we don't count week 17, but I, I'll just throw it in uh, for this data point. Okay. 103 rushing attempts for 482 yards, 36, uh, rece- uh, 36 receptions for 204 yards, four touchdowns for a total of 120.6 fantasy points. Pretty good, like for a seven-game sample size of him being the lead dog. Um, now, Boston Scott over that time, which I find it interesting, he had 45 carries for 177 yards, 25 receptions for 199. He also had four touchdowns uh, for 84.6 fantasy points, which I did think was intriguing. Now, um, I love the article. I thought what he did with the article was was very, very good, uh, very good detail. One of the things I really did like that he put in the article is uh, in the stat, he said one, he was Miles Sanders, one of three rookies to have at least 1,300 scrimmage yards and 300 return yards. Uh, do, you wa- do you guys want to take a guess at the other two? Uh, that running backs. I on know there. the other two because I yeah. read the article. Uh, Ch- <laughs> Chelsea, you want to take a guess at who the other two? It's a little tricky because um, one of them I was actually really shocked with. The other one was a rookie returner only. Um, you want to take a guess, Chelsea? Or, or are you? Gonna... Mm-hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> a- Adrian Peterson and Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Now, um, pretty good, pretty good company. I will say not only that, but they also did bring in a, uh, a punt returner this year. So it looks like they might be trying to give Alvin Kamara maybe a little bit more work. I don't know what that that's just what the tea leaves kind of look like for me. Uh, now, uh, they did end up picking up unrestricted uh, free agent Mike Warren, who is known as a bruiser back. But when I looked it up, Travis, his stats and everything, um, he's the exact same size as Miles Sanders. So uh, I don't know how much of a better bruiser back he is. Now, I do like Mike Warren. His tape did look good in college. But for the same, for the sake of like the size, I don't, I don't think that that was too worrisome. The biggest concern with me, Travis, was that they they lost highly ranked right guard Brandon Brooks just uh, last week to a torn Achilles. Uh, that is a big blow, but I know you're going to talk about that situation here in a second. So it did, based on our pre-conversation, uh, I will back off that a little bit. But 
my ultimate conclusion for Miles Sanders is that he's right around where I think he should be. Actually, like I feel confident, you know, that he will be right around QB uh, or RB. 12, 13, I think, you know, he's being taken after Austin Eckler. I would take him before Austin Eckler. But then anything above that, I th- I mean, that's jo- Josh Jacobs is coming off as RB11. I would rather have Josh Jacobs than Miles Sanders just because I'm more confident in that workload. Well, look, I, I, I can understand the concern, and I, I get why you would take Josh Jacobs, but I'm all in on Miles Sanders. And the reason is, is he's being taken at RB13. Johnny, he finished his RB15 last year in a committee, only getting three rushing touchdowns and averaging just over eight rushes per game with the 10 games that he had with Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard is gone. So if you look at like what Jordan Howard was on on pace to do, he was on pace for 200 carries and 12 touchdowns last year. If you give 70 percent of that to Miles Sanders, he's for sure a top 10 running back. And then you got if if he's got the load, you've got to start talking about him as as a potential top five if he stays healthy all year and he, he is in that system. The look, I get it. The concern is Doug Peterson, right? Doug Peterson's never had anything other than a committee. Well, NJ.com has got Peterson quoted saying the Michael Jordan.com? NJ, New Jersey. Oh, oh, got yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> so Miles is our number one. He's the guy we drafted last year, and he's had a tremendous rookie season. He's ready to carry the load. And so I think if you've got a guy in Doug Peterson who's never used a committee before, I understand the hesitancy, but he's also talking about Miles Sanders being their guy and carrying the load. But how after many Howard after Howard got injury injured, Miles saw a 75 percent increase in fantasy production. There is no question in my mind when you look at what the Eagles have done. Yes, you could talk about Warren just recently. I, I'm not buying that, Johnny. They didn't draft a guy. They didn't bring in a veteran like a, a real big name veteran when there were some big name veterans out on the market. They were they looking like they and, were and, looking. and it's only and they, it's didn't, only they didn't sign. And it's only June. Didn't. All right. That's fine. But they've they've. What so far they've got their coach telling me they're going to do it. I look at what he did down the stretch and I look at that. He finished with all of that against him. He finished as the RB 15. So right where he's going right now, right. his ADP will probably even go up more if they don't sign anybody with big name value down the stretch. So let me ask you this. It, based on what you're saying, I, I, I completely agree with your arguments. This is where I, I get I get concerned in. And that is where are we talking I understand how many touches Jordan Howard had, right? And I understand the pace that that Miles Sanders was on, but it's only around 200 touches, and then maybe and then plus like maybe you're looking at 250 touches, maybe at 200. And I can oh no, definitely 200. Like how Howard was on pace for 200 rushes alone, right? And and you think that so what? But and you think so? You think that he's all of a sudden Miles Sanders is going to take a huge huge step forward and the receiving game too. 75% increase over the span that he was without Howard. So yes, I I do believe that they've shown me that that's what they want to do. He had 36 targets all of last year, 36 targets all of last year after. So I, that's where I'm concerned. Like you're saying, even if you add 200, even if you double that to 200 and because he had 103 carries, right? And you're saying Jordan Jordan Howard had was on pace for 207 touches carries. Okay, give him 200 Sanders 200 carries. You're looking at receptions. What do you think it's going to go up to? You would have to go up even more in in targets and receptions by like a 20 more. I I just find that pretty hard he's, with Boston he's probably Scott. Probably going. Okay, he's probably going to get somewhere between 35 and 45 targets this 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 season. And he's probably going to wind up more than 200 carries, if we're honest. So sure, like I, th- I, I don't know what your argument here is. Yeah, he's going ri- to be somewhere within the 250 range for touches. I think that's great for an RB one. No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm, like I'm just. I'm get, the, the concern is I, that we, we are hoping the max he's going to get is 250 touches. Like we're already saying, that's where, that's where my hesitation comes in. I'm not saying that Miles Sanders isn't a good running back or he can't be an RB one because I, I think that with the production, if he's, I if honestly he's talented, don't know but, what you're saying. Because like I, I don't get what you're what you're getting. What, I, what I'm saying is that where he's going right now is RB RB twelve RB thirteen right. 
and the, the whole argument is based on he's going to get all these touches, but I don't see where all these touches are actually going to come from. Like it doesn't add up to a whole lot like we think it is. Like we are we are saying that maybe he's going to get 250 touches. I will tell you later on in our show, guys, that are that you can get in the sixth round that I can guarantee are going to get 250 touches, and they're going six rounds later. That's my concern is that I think people are getting really high hyped up over Miles Sanders and could he be as good as we think he is sure but like right now I'm 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 just projecting and being honest with Whisper Nation and being honest with you and I'm like yo I'm I'm stretching to get him 250 uh, uh touches stretching and now you're wanting me to take him in the second round maybe late first that is sketchy to me that's all I'm saying well, it could be sketchy to you. I'm just uh, the guy increased his his production over the back half of last year when Jordan Howard was gone. They clearly love the guy. He's going to be their guy. And if he's a number one on an offense like Philly, who doesn't have a ton of like receiving weapons, like I, I sign me up. Like okay. I, I think that's the other case you can make for his increase in in production in the receiving room is like who do they who else do they have? Boston Scott. Like, that's in uh, more uh, consistency in their quarterback position again this year too. Hopefully. Yeah, this, this is true. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers.